So the hashtag is the topic I want to talk about here because this is the one that everyone wants to know. What's a hashtag? How do I use a hashtag? The hashtag. First of all, let's define it. Hashtag, an active keyword. Active means you can click on it to see more. A regular old keyword is just some text. It's text, that's it. But a hashtag is active in that you can click on it to see more. So we will say here, cats, not a hashtag. But cats is a hashtag. What's the difference? The hash mark symbol. So putting that hash mark symbol, which is on the keyboard shift three, here's a keyword. Cats. My business is all about selling cat food, so I might use the hashtag cats. If I simply write the word cats, it might not be found by people that are searching for stuff about cats on Twitter. If I use the hashtag cats, it may be found a little easier, and it's also an active link, meaning I can click on it, and all of the tweets that are using that hashtag will show up. I'll demonstrate that in a moment but hashtags, no spaces, no symbols. So, hashtag Victor's Bakery, yes. Hashtag Victor's Space Bakery, no. And hashtag Victor's Dash Bakery, no space, no. The hashtag would actually only really be Victor. That symbol breaks it. So Victor would be the hashtag, and then it doesn't stand out like a unique word anymore. I need Victor's Victory, one word. Capitalization doesn't matter. So, symbols only. Um, yeah, no punctuation, dots, commas, anything like that. Victor's Bakery. So all lowercase, that would work just fine. With the uppercase letters, that's fine too. The reason people might use uppercases in the words for readability. This is jumbling together in my mind. But this with the capital letters at least kind of looks kind of readable. So it doesn't matter capital or lowercase but no symbols, exclamation points, dashes, apostrophes, and such. Anyone can create a hashtag or reuse another hashtag, one that already exists. So, hashtag SB40, what do you think that is? Sen not Senate Bill, no? Super Bowl, Super Bowl 40. But yeah, the Senate bills, whatever, pop up all the time when they make those bad ones. So, Super Bowl 40. That was a hashtag that if you were watching the Super Bowl and you wanted to join the larger conversation of the Super Bowl, you would do your tweet and add the hashtag SB, hashtag SB40. How to do it, we'll see in a moment. But the concept is, my tweet, I've sort of attached a keyword. So my tweet is sort of linked with everyone else's tweet using that keyword. Can you put it in the tweet itself? Yes. At the last... Anywhere, actually, at the beginning or at the end, but it's common at the end. So it comes back as a separate tweet with the hashtag? No, nope, it's that one tweet. Again, I'll demonstrate it in a moment. But the idea is that I'm adding the hashtag as a keyword to the tweet so that it's linked to every other tweet, which we'll see in a moment. Yes? Know which hashtags to use to join bigger conversations. Because you started like making up, but yes. nobody can So here, anyone can create a hashtag. Don't make your own hashtags. Usually. Because, yeah, you're right. If I have two followers and I make up a hashtag, hashtag Victor's Bakery, tasty. Well, no one else knows about it. No one else is using it. I'm the only one tweeting about it with that hashtag. No one else knows, no one else cares. 
So really, it's going to be about jumping on the bandwagon of other hashtags that exist. There is a, a, a part where the hashtag is too popular that you won't be visible because everyone is using it. There's a point where that other hashtag on the other side is not so popular. No one's using it. No one cares. No one knows you. Somewhere in the middle is the right hashtag. And this, again, is the example of everyone's going to have the right hashtag. I can't tell everyone the best hashtag. But one way to see this is whenever you go back to your home screen, you're going to see on the left side, trends for you. Hey, it's Star Trek Day. Hashtag Star Trek Day. Star Trek is 51 years old. So these with this hashtag at the front, and then we probably have heard about the Equifax breach, uh, So and of course the hurricanes. So all of these are hashtags that are active that I can click on, and all of the, all of the result will be, these are all of the thousands of people that are using that hashtag about this topic. Big people, small people, big businesses, little people little businesses. So this is one place to see them right here and there's also a way to change the change the trends targeted to a city. What are the popular hashtags in the city, in this country? And then when we get more advanced in a moment about more hashtags, we'll, we'll see that. But people will always ask, is there a website that lists all the hashtags? Yes. Don't, don't bother with them. Hashtags come and go, they change. Uh, you might find a perfect hashtag for your business, but it doesn't have much activity. So really, you want to keep up to date with these trends. You want to use search, which we'll get to in a moment. So this is very variable for people. So all the hashtags and the trends for you, it's going to be related to the people I'm following. It's going to be related to what you're doing on Twitter, yes. Who you are following. How do I choose who I follow? Because I have the who to follow, find people, but it just gives me the option That's a little off topic for the moment. Let, let me come back on who to follow. But yes, all of these trends and stuff will happen based on what you've got set up or your your option here. But we'll get back to actual followers and such in another week. Yeah, yeah. Just one moment. Armin, you had a question also? Oh. Do you know, is there a limit on, on uh, numerous hashtags? Oh, OK. Uh, uh, hashtags. Let me make a note of that. Um, to make your own hashtag. Don't go overboard on hashtags. If the hashtag is a link to try to get you visibility and popularity, people think, I'm going to put 17 hashtags. I'll reach everyone. No, you're a spammer. That's what spammers do. They put out their link to their Viagra, and they put 40 hashtags at the bottom. <laughs> so you don't want to be a spammer. What I'm going to say, don't go overboard on hashtags. One to three hashtags is enough. One, if it works, is enough. If you need a couple more hashtags, so these hashtags are like a keyword that defines what this tweet is. And it then connects you to other people's tweets. So everyone using the hashtag of Friday Feeling, 115,000 tweets, when I click there, I see all of these people, radio stations, regular people, bands, etc., feel uh, ceiling using all of this. So Urban Swan over here used this hashtag. So all of these people are linked to that. And the idea here is that um, this is to, to get this conversation going. Well, you think this is something going viral, how do you find it? It's, if it's going viral, it's going viral. You see it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I understand that, but if, if you're not linked to that conversation, how would you know? You have to be active. You have to be checking in and logging in and seeing it. what are the trends and searching, which again, we will cover these things several times throughout these networks because you can go viral on Twitter, you can go viral on Facebook, you can go viral on all of them. If we don't quite get to it at the moment, we will cover it all in all of these networks. But it's kind of a hard answer to give because you, you have to be active on these networks to see it. You'll see it in trends, you'll see it popping up on your screen, and then we'll see about searching and all of that. Feed into itself, sort of. Yeah. No, something could go viral simply for dumb luck. Uh, it's not. There's no like direct correlation about. Uh, there's no direct correlation about. I put in three hashtags and now I'm viral. It depends what the hashtag is, what the time of day is, what the picture is. There's just. It's hard. I can't teach a class on how how to go viral, but I can teach a class on how to put out good content 
that helps to get you popular. Question. Why would you ever want to register a hashtag? There's no like governing body where you register it or whatever. I can make up a hashtag right now. Oh, I know you can make up one because I've made up a ton, but I was That's reading on something on a blog on something that you should register a hashtag, register a hashtag to your company, and then I went in there and I was looking and I'm like, well, I could create that hashtag. Why would I want to pay money to register it to my company? Hmm, Does okay. that make sense? Are you, so you're saying register like a real like patent and trademark and that's basically sort of thing? you trademark the hashtag, so it's you. <clears throat> that's I don't know how that holds up in court because all of these trademarks and copyrights and all of that is supposed to be that you have something tangible or something unique that only you created and invented. And sure, I could try to you know register a hashtag officially, but I think that's on really shaky ground. That's like so. There's really no reason to ever do it. No, not not really, unless you can prove that you are the first company to have invented that sequence of words and have it some proof to show the courts that yeah, I'm the inventor of this hashtag. Mm -hmm. I, I just didn't know if it wasn't necessarily to say I'm inventing, but basically, if you put that hashtag, like if someone say I registered hashtag Friday Buildings, like I registered it. If you put it in there and it's trending, but if you actually click it. It would link you back to my page. No way to do that. No, these links right here. Uh, no, even if you registered it, this is not going to ever link back to like the person's website. It's only going to link to results of people using that hashtag. And based on popularity and other things, this is right now the most popular tweet using Friday Feeling. You have these number of likes and all of that. So there's no real point in. Uh, uh, going that far to register. Mm -hmm. Just one moment. Question? You had a question? Well, I was going to ask what determines the order they're coming up. So the most popular comes up first? Not really. It sort of seems random because there's a 57,000 tweets here, but it's lower than 18,000 tweets here. I don't know really what is this order, but everything here is trending for some reason. So there's no real order there, and I wouldn't quite worry about that order. It's just that all of those there at the moment are trending and active and important. And over on the other in the middle, these ones are like the in the middle here. Most popular. All of these things in the middle here are related to following. Mm -hmm. I am following this account is following these accounts, so I see their stuff. Uh, this is the thing about followers and following, like Facebook. So I've chosen to see this stuff in the middle. So it's stuff you've chosen to follow? Yes. Question. Um, you were just going to create one. As far as you just said, like you put, you put the pound sign and then it's right whatever you want. Exactly. So if I'm creating a tweet and I'm saying sale this Saturday on all cat food. Use our code ABC on our website. And then I add here hashtag cat, hashtag sales, hashtag coupon, hashtag desperate. No, but <laughs> if you, again, you don't want to go that far. Not too many hashtags. So you just put the pound symbol, you start writing. The cool thing is it may pop up to tell you suggestions of what hashtags may be useful. So I would love it for it to tell me the exact number of popularity and such, but as I start typing hashtag or hash mark cat, it says you might think about Catalonia, Catterday, Catholic, thinking cats. Okay, maybe the hashtag cats, cats like Twitter. This doesn't tell you at all that at the moment from here, this is the most popular one. I wish it would. But to create a hashtag or use a hashtag, you just type it, and it may pop up to give you suggestions. So, got. I wonder what got is. G O T. G O T. Game of Thrones. No Game of Thrones fans? <laughs> so, if you wanted to jump on the bandwagon of Game of Thrones, like, why would I put the Game of Thrones hashtag on a cat food tweet? This is, again, the abuse of the system. You have one to three hashtags on topic. Just because the Super Bowl, SB41, right? I don't want to put a hashtag unrelated because then people will ignore it or report it or whatever. It's not giving you the result that you want for your effort. Question. 
Were hash tags uh, intentional when they were first started, or was it accidental? No, some of the things that happened in the in the beginning of Twitter, um, the Twitter company didn't think of or invent, and people made it up. So hashtags originally were pe were community driven, community created. Uh, when there were less accounts on Twitter, people wanted to kind of join together, sort of. So they said, let's all use this hashtag to identify each other. Twitter saw that and said, let's make it better and make the act have, make the, the link an active, make the text an active link so that then they are, are linked together and you can read them. So hashtags. Use them as one to three keywords that define your tweet so that the people that care about the message can find it easier. These movies, you know, Hollywood movies, they oftentimes they have the, the trailer that plays and hashtag saw 27 or hashtag the notebook part two, you know, whatever. They have some sort of hashtag to get this conversation happening. I can't wait to see that movie. I write my tweet, I can't wait to see that movie, hashtag saw 27. So for you as a business, your challenge is, what's the right hashtag for me to use? That's based on your business in general, your product, your goals, your demographics. Because the, if you've created the account um, right now, these are a little harder to answer. Um, this is why I would say again about reconnaissance competitor analysis. What is my competition doing? I'm a pizza parlor. I want to see what other pizza parlors are doing. So I'll show you how to do that competitor analysis in just a moment. But I would go look at the competition. These pizza parlors are using these hashtags. I may think about using those hashtags as well. It seems that people are, are interested in buying a pizza and they look for the hashtag got pizza or hashtag Friday night pizza. So I want to put that. I want to put that hashtag to get people to find me. If I simply put pizza, maybe it's too broad. Maybe too many people are talking about pizza for some reason. But if I want to use hashtag Friday night pizza, you know, I might reach the people on Friday night that have the munchies for pizza and I'm selling pizza. So the way to find the right hashtag, yes, you're going to find websites out there that will have lists and lists of hashtags. And they may even break it down by industry. But I wouldn't really bother with them. These things change. Maybe that hashtag. There's so many times where a company thinks that they want to make this hashtag be the viral one, and something else is the viral one, and they have no control over it. So don't worry about looking up like databases of hashtags. I would do it by checking the trending, and I would do it by the way I'm going to show you right now, which is competitor analysis. Use Twitter to search for your competition to see what they're doing. Based on that, develop your own strategy. So I'll show you live in a moment. Strategy. Strategy. So uh, competitor analysis. This is the great thing about this. In traditional marketing, this is an aspect of that as well, competitor analysis. What is the business down the street doing? They're a furniture shop. I'm a furniture shop. What are they doing? How can I do it better? Traditional marketing. Web marketing, online marketing, digital marketing, we can do that also and perhaps even better because we can see directly what they're doing. You know, if, I, if, I'm, trying to get re, if I'm trying to get intel from the shop down the street, I might call the business and change my voice and ask them, how much are you charging for this today? And then they figure it out, it's me. Well, online, digitally, there is there's some anonymity for us to be able to do this. So here's how we would do it. Let's say this business, VMC Inc., is about pizza. So I, I'm a pizza parlor. I want to see what my competition is about pizza. 
in Twitter, we have a way to search. Now be careful, because you can search on Google, you can search on Yahoo, and those search all over the web. In each network, you have a way to search only in the network. So this search box right here is searching in Twitter. You may see another search that's going to search all over the internet. I don't want that. In Twitter, I have search. If I search hashtag pizza, and as I'm typing, it may be suggesting there's Pizza Friday. There's pizza. Don't click on Pizzagate. I'm not kidding. Uh, pizza Friday. So if I click on that one, uh, people are tweeting that. He's got some pizza right there. People talking about pizza. So lots of people uh, talking about pizza. I might see businesses. Vinewood Motors, I see people, BCFBE Equipment, Troy DeRego, okay, Better Health Bakery, I found one. It's not going to be always right away you get a good result. You have to see your results. I seem to have found a business that is about pizza. You hover your mouse over any of these accounts, you will then see their logo, their graphic, their biography. So part of this reconnaissance is looking at an account that is relevant. Here is another pizza place. Artisan bakery in Hagerston providing placements to adults recovering from mental ill health, social enterprise run by, etc. So this, I could possibly consider it a competition in that we are both selling pizza. I'm seeing that they have this kind of post which I can then analyze for me to decide what to do myself. Question? If I have a pizza shop and if I want to you know, take a picture of one of my product and then put it on Facebook and then the hashtag Pizza Friday. Yes. And can I uh, make this just for San Diego? No, no. The, the default is that this will go all over the place. But when we look at the paid versions, the paid aspects, then we can target. So for free, our hashtag, our tweets go everywhere. But if we pay, we can target it to specific locations and demographics. So using the hashtag? Yeah. Okay. So the competitor analysis. Simply, I'm looking at this competition. And they've got a photo of a pizza. Not really a great photo. You know, they're not focusing on the pizza very much. Is the out there for some reason. So this is not a great, great example. But they've got the food. So they should be telling me I should be perhaps um, sharing content that is food that really focuses on the pizza. And but look at how they wrote it. It's raining outside. Okay, that's why they're looking outside. It's raining outside, and we have pizza inside. Come on over. <coughs> okay, so they're enticing you. Uh, it's raining outside. I wish it was raining here, but it's raining outside. Come over here and get some pizza. That might give me an idea for what me, for myself, when I'm going to tweet for my account. I'm going to take a photo. I'm going to think of something clever or interesting. I'm going to put the hashtag Pizza Friday. And I'm going to try to join this conversation of getting the word out for my business. So the Good Luck Club, morning all, TGIF, well you asked and we're going to deliver tonight, Pizza Friday's here. Okay, so they, they did it a little bit more interestingly. Um, one way to measure the success is to see the stats down here. These stats are telling you likes and other things, but this has got three likes. Three people liked that. They have 1,400 followers three likes. Again, it's very low, very common and very low that you have this conversion rate. Three divided out of 1,421 is minuscule, but it's normal. That's why I'm always trying to get as, as more followers as possible to bring the numbers up of conversions. Comparing over here, Good Luck Club, they got nine likes. Nine is better than three. And then if I look at their stats hovering over, they've got 354 followers. So that's a higher conversion rate. 9 divided by 354 is a higher number than 4 divided by 1,400. 
So just by those raw numbers, this was a more effective ad. This is a more effective tweet. And they also took a lot more effort. Not simply a photo that was a little too dark and off-center. This is a design. They used Photoshop or something to take a photo, to crop it, to put it round, to put the text, to put the right font. And that's what they shared. That took a lot more effort. Question. It's so it's somewhat random and it's somewhat based on popularity because if I do look at the top, you know, seven is not really even better than nine. It's kind of random. So there's some sort of proprietary trade secrets that Twitter doesn't quite reveal to how you get to the top. But I wouldn't quite worry at the top there because even this that was at the top, there's a brand new tweet pushing it down as I've been talking. You can also see results by going into latest. I like to go to latest instead of top. These are the latest tweets two minutes ago that use these hashtags. So I wouldn't bother too much about getting that top popularity there because that's going to be constantly changing. But I would use these results in search in latest to see what's new. I can then see people these are accounts that have pizza somewhere in the title. We just do simply pizza. So we have pizza pizza, we have Dr. Pizza, we have Domino's Pizza. Look at that, Dr. Pizza is higher than Domino's Pizza. Again, it doesn't matter quite the order of this as long as you get found. Domino's Pizza has... has... 1.21 million followers. A lot of people like pizza. And compared to Pizza Pizza, they have only 2,000 or 33,000 followers. They're higher, I wouldn't really call them number one, but they're higher in the results, but they're all about pizza. And I may appear here too because of how often I tweet, who likes it, how it goes viral, lots of factors. But the point of this is to do the searching, to use these hashtags, to think of hashtags, to kind of click on suggestions and all of that, to look at the latest results, people's results, photo results, video results, to get idea, ideas of how you can create content. You know, some of them, honestly, that's not a very appetizing pizza right there. It's too dark, it looks very messy. That's an appetizing one. It's not that hard. When you look at the competition and look at it a little bit more uh, objectively, try if you don't have the knowledge or the education or the keywords of graphic design, doesn't matter. What's the old saying? I don't know art, but I know what I like. So look at the pictures and the tweets and all of that of the competition and kind of think, what do I like about it? What stands out to me? You know, why would you say, it was my opinion, but why would you say, why would I think that this is a bad picture right here? It doesn't even look like pizza. It doesn't even look like pizza. It looks frozen. So whatever the answer is right. This picture is not the best. Why might you say that this picture on the right is better? Lots of pizzas. It looks visually a little bit more interesting. They look healthier because they want greens. Healthier. Look at greens. Those beans. Artistically, you know, it's a cool pattern. It looks like a little, little stuffer. And that's not hard for you to do. You can create something that looks interesting like that. I sell cupcakes, Victor's Bakery. I could put five cupcakes in a way that looks like a pattern. You could do that. You're a jeweler. You know, you could take a simple photo of your jewelry, but it may end up looking like that. Think about putting the, the jewelry together in an interesting way. Look at the competition of other jewelers and see what they've done and do your version. You're not stealing anyone, even if you put it exactly that way. They also seem to have put some sort of like faded filter. The colors don't really pop. They, they probably did that on purpose. Pizza, pizza Rova, Free Pizza Friday. That's one with more effort also. Text. Icons. A really close photo of the picture. For food, a lot of the time, uh, a great photo is that they simply get close. You know, look at these pizza, pizza ads right here. 
It's, it doesn't have to be the whole pizza. It looks slightly jumbled up. This one's a little better because it's separated from the background. But look at how close it is to the product plus all of that text. Same one there. These are paid, I think. I, no, uh, most likely these are not paid. The paid ones, you see them in a different way, and they're marked. So you can click on each one to see when the date was, August 29th. And again, there's some semi-randomness about what appears here, August 29th. Checking the competition, reconnaissance, competitor analysis. <coughs> Try to break down a tweet that you like to understand what makes it good. I might not have the language and understand about the three-fourths rule, are the concepts of symmetry or repetition and such. You don't need that. You look at it and you'll kind of know what you'll like. Yes? Is there an effect where you put likes? Is it going to start feeding me whatever I started showing? Yes. As you are active, anything that you do on these networks, the network will change to try to show you what it thinks you might want. So as you like other people's stuff, it will show you more of that stuff which is good and bad. It's good for us because I want people to like my stuff, to see more of my stuff. But it's bad because maybe I'm liking stuff that I, is embarrassing, and it's going to show you more embarrassing stuff. So this is one of the tactics. When we talk about Google Plus next time, we'll come back a little bit to the competitor analysis. We'll also come back to um, this tactic of um, uh, activity, how do I call it? It's um, uh, activity with, I'm blanking because I need a pizza, but um, <laughs> there's You're preparing a, us for lunch. Hmm. Next week we'll, we'll look at this tactic of um, I call it activity upon activity. Let's call it that for the moment. Activity upon activity. This is a tactic that we'll see later on as we're running out of time for the day. Again, when we learn this next time on Google+, we can apply it back on Twitter. So if we didn't get to it today, it'll apply on every other network when we talk about it next time. But this is, an, this is a, another tactic that we'll look at later to be active with those that are active. I'll explain what that means and how it works next time. But there's still plenty of things that we can talk about on Twitter. Any general questions as we wind down the lecture? Sure. These notes I'm going to put into the network folder in one moment, but I'll leave it with one more thing. Here's your homework. There's no homework, but here's your homework. Be active on social media. Tweet, post, share, whatever the network calls it, at least once per week. Most of these accounts that have a lot of popularity tweet something every week, every day, every hour. That's a lot of work. But what's going to be your task is, if you created an account a year ago and you haven't used it, it's not helping you. You want to use it more than zero. Even once a month is better than nothing, but not by much. So think of a tweet to make every week, once a week. Day of the week, I can't tell you. Hour, I can't tell you. You're going to get that as you are active. And I often also then give the, the goal you know, once per week. Um, and people are going to see they're going to do it much more than, than that, and that's fine. And you're going to build your activity. We'll refine that strategy later on as, as the other networks, as we get to the other networks. That's it for the moment. I'm going to put this... Quick question. Yes. So for Twitter, um, if you want to reach out with your follow or you want to, your followers, I can't, I obviously, they're linked to Facebook, right, or my cell phone. So I can pull them. Is it like Facebook that they can... Um, accept you or not accept you? Uh, Twitter is different than, than, than Facebook in that on Facebook it's basically a one-to-one -one connection. Mm -hmm. I want to connect with someone and we both agree. Twitter and almost every other network is not like that. That people can follow me 
and I don't have to follow them back. So there is no one-to-one -one connection on most networks. Facebook is the exception that time that you have to basically agree that both of you are connected. Yes? Uh, what name do you want us to use for you? First name, last name, this Um That's up to you. Perfectly fine. Whatever you'd like to call me. Instructor Victor, anything? Sure. Mr. Victor. 